Welcome, everyone. This is the first episode of the RLS podcast. The purpose of this series is to bring on the best writers that are in the Rusin community, and specifically those who have written for RLS. Today, I have one of our most special writers, someone and someone from Serbia. She is a Pannonian Rusin. Her name is Mihaela. Mihaela, would you be able to introduce yourself a little bit? And then we'll get into your article. Yes, of course. So hello to everyone. My name is Mihaela. I'm almost 22 years old and I am from Kerestur in Vojvodina, Serbia. So I've been Rusin. It is my origin. Both of my parents are Rusin from Serbia. So there is no like big deal. We're all Rusins. And in general, since I was a kid, I was always interested in my identity i was loved um learning new languages i mean i was good at it i was loved the russian language serbian english deutsch i was learning even uh, turkish and japanese and it is something that i always loved and then since i was a kid i always uh, loved writing stories actually I, I did started writing a diary as a kid and i was like Mm -hmm. oh i'm good at it i like it like i like how i feel you know when i'm writing it so then i started um well you know like your imagination when uh, your kid is like going um you want to explore you need to you want to find some new things and then i started writing some uh, uh like sci-fi science fiction things and later i started writing a poetry and a prose and it was just like evolving it into something bigger. And from February this year, I started being a part, yes, uh, as a RLS columnist. And here I am. In your piece, it, um, its name is uh, Keeping Up With The World. To me, it portrays a very um, interesting picture in some ways of the, of the Russians of Pannonia. One of the things that I'm sure we'll get into many of the topics that i that i have in mind but i think one of the first ones that come that kind of comes to my mind from that was just how disconnected pannonian rusins are from carpetho rusins or people that are from the homeland uh it seems like it, it, it is from from your writings it seems as though pannonian rusins don't really know almost anything about the people up north you know part of the reason why i wanted to bring you on as kind of the first person is that i mean this these things aren't really talked about especially in english you know this, these kind of disconnect uh points within within kind of the international rule russian sphere and so would you be able to go a little bit more in depth on kind of how pannonian russian see people from prashov transcarpathia Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sure. Yeah, well, uh, first, I will say that Russians, Pannonian ones, are generally, I would say they are like really introvert people, not just toward the Carpathians, but generally toward both Serbian people and outside. I think we're really, really disconnected from a lot of other people and countries, general the world, probably. Mm -hmm. I do see that as a big issue. But with Carpathians, I mean, you said homeland. Uh, when it comes to Pannonians, I think that when you say homeland, uh, we will say it's Serbia, like no Carpathia. You know, we, we don't think about Carpathia at all. And um, yes, I was writing an article that because, um, you know, before I became a columnist, I I must admit that I didn't know much about uh, Carpathian, about um, I didn't know much about it too. And I was thinking about it, like, but where did I, like, where should I learn about it, you know? And then I get back into my ele elementary school. And you, uh, you know, the problem is that uh, generally our educational system is based on, you know, the whole ministry of education in Serbia is making our plan and programs for the schools. And I think there was not much space to learn about the Russian community in general. But of course, I don't see that as an excuse. I think that who wants surely will teach us about that. Yeah. 
but uh, I don't really remember. I do remember like in the Russian classes of Russian language and literature uh, was um, we did learn about Carpathians, but like uh, just some of the important day dates, like mm -hmm. when we moved, who was important, and we were talking about, I don't know, just a few people, few dates, and that was it. And I don't like, uh, I never liked classes of that type because there was no, it was just, um, just a theory, uh, like, you know, expanding thoughts, like, uh what is there now who is there now it was like it's in the past and that's it you know we moved mm. from transcopatia here and that's all like like there, there is no other people currently so, there or something it's like almost that, like you know? yeah almost as though if once you guys moved down to serbia everyone else died out in the homeland and, <laughs> and you're the only russians left almost well you know when time. i was a kid yeah, well, while I was a kid, I thought that no one is there. <laughs> like, you know, we're the, only, we're the only Russians in the world. Yes, that's literally yeah. what I thought. And um, uh, so, yes, basically, and a lot of my experiences, when you say Russian in Serbia, you mean only Russians in Serbia. While I was making my article about war, you know, while I was um, texting other people, if you want to join me to be, to talk about it, to say something, mm -hmm. I don't know. And when I say Russians, they were like, you know, it's it's actually a very logical connection when you say Ukraine, Russians, war and everything. But people here were like, why are you connecting us? You know, like, why? What do we have with the Ukraine, with the war? Like, what's so important about it? Like, it it's not, uh, we have nothing to do with that. And I was like, yes, but when I say Russian, I want to talk about the general in the world. You know, Ukraine has a lot of Russian people and they're like, um, like, yeah, but it still has nothing to do with us. Like we're whole <laughs> separated things, you know, that's just. Well, yeah. and, you know, and it's kind of when we started to do the whole Letters from Ukraine series, I don't think a single Pannonian sent anything in at all which that was not true for anywhere else but Lemkovena. So yeah, it's kind of, it, you know, I am these things over the years have made me quite, I shouldn't say pessimistic, but kind of frustrated, I guess, is that you see people from Pannonia and they don't really give a damn about people from Transcarpathia and people from Prashov don't care about Transcarpathians. And, and you know, the Lemkos are doing, you know, going off and doing their own thing. Um, I mean, this seems like a very, you know, it seems like like uh, Pannonians are just following the same kind of uh, rule book somehow that everyone else is. And I, I think that I got the impression from your article that you don't want it to be that way, at least in terms of the Pannonian Rusin association with Carpathia Rusins, you, you would wish this these two communities would be much more connected or at least know about each other a lot more. I, I'm kind of interested in in kind of getting, um, I know you just talked a little bit about it, but I, from what I remember you told me, you've asked some, uh, some, uh, some like officials or some school people uh, there. What do they, like, has it been generally like a negative point of view besides the whole commenting on the war? Like, has it been a kind of negative point of view of trying to associate with people in the Carpathians, or or is it just something that people just don't really have an opinion on? I guess. Well, mostly it is uh, probably um, they surely don't have the huge amount doesn't have any opinions. Some of the some of them are like I think people are generally afraid to tell their opinion. You know, um, this is a small we are small village and uh, we all know each other and you know we're still in the yeah. past like who is gonna tell what and why if my opinion won't be accepted and you know uh, you know it is sometimes problem when the uh, the serbian general 
as a state uh, has a huge bond and it if we ask who is like the first the closest brother to serbia actually it will be russia you know and generally serbian people are really hyped for the russians they're on the russian side but uh, russians are like from the other side you have like extremely uh huge ukrainophiles like just ukraine ukraine and you have these who are just don't have opinion or as i said they are afraid to speak up you know because sometimes you will be judged you're afraid you're like won't get a job or you will lose a job or <laughs> something like that but uh, maybe the people from uh, higher statuses doesn't don't really want to talk about it you know that's that's just how i it will be complicated for them you know i was kind of disappointed because i did ask people who are like well educated uh who has um um i don't know how to say like the power in our community the status which you know their words uh, need to mean something and i was kind of disappointed when some people are like didn't respond to me at all or we're just like, I'm not interested, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to share my thoughts. So I am kind of pessimistic too with that, but I don't know, maybe the right people who wants to tell something good doesn't really want to talk about it. And that's kind of the problem. I, I think that it's, um, it's, I mean, it is disappointing for all of the better, infrastructure in terms of cultural development you guys have and yet these i mean you don't hear of anyone really besides you and like a couple others who do anything outside of this kind of wall i'm kind of interested into uh to learn more about why you think i mean of course small small communities are going to be in some ways always dysfunctional versus like a huge country or something like that i mean when you only have ten thousand people it's a lot more homely shall we say do you think that the war um affected the yugoslav um kind of like the breakup of yugoslavia do you think from from who you've talked to do you think that greatly affected the pannonian russian community in terms of whether it be culturally these different sort of um, areas, uh, or or do you think that even before the war, it was probably like this? I don't think it affected, but uh, I think like the the first, the main problem isn't about this. I think it's about the people, you know, because a lot of things can happen, including war. But the people, we can see, they're not really changing over the years. You know, we had so many wars, and like we still didn't learn uh, much about things like this. You know, generally, I don't like always talking about war. People like uh, always asking me, "Which side are you on? Like, what's your point of view?" And mm -hmm. sometimes I do don't want to talk about it because, um, you know, uh, I just don't see the point of the war and everything. Okay, no, I don't see the point of uh, picking the side actually you know uh, that is the point of the war itself they want us to choose the side you know and i don't like the thing because like when we were talking are you a russian side ukraine side there is no ukraine or russian side there is there are people um who are living in the cities, who are dying who are immigrating immigrating and they are guaranteed which is like doing this all to us you know and um if uh, generally people on the top don't really care about size you know if they send their own people to war they don't really matter or will be killed you know in some way and um i really don't like it so uh generally yeah yugoslavia was um you know we always say in serbia that oh wish we wish tito was here again when it was tito's time it was better it will be better if it continued to be like that but you know i don't think um if there is like one main person on the top he's still nothing compared to the whole nation you know if people think right if they unite there is no there is no better there is no 
a bigger power than people themselves with the right way of thinking and doing you know war wouldn't be here if um, like who made them do this so uh, the both sides have uh have their own faults for a lot of things but um you know the miscommunications not thinking and like a lot of separations lead to this but about yugoslavia well serbia was i don't know serbia was always like it is peaceful here but sometimes we, we always catch the the we're always catched in those wars and the, the crisis and uh you know we know the nato what did we know everything and um the consequences are are here i think they are still here and will be here are you worried that just the Pannonian Russian community is going to die on its own or because you know i've American Russians are usually pretty shit at telling me the truth of what's going on in Europe. I found out quite quite uh, clearly when I actually visited there. No one knew what the hell they were talking about. But what I have heard is that a lot of the community is not necessarily as strong as it once was in terms of many people have emigrated. There's not the, the institutional structures aren't as strong as they used to be. There's a lot of Serbians moving into Rusin towns or the couple of towns you guys have. What's your take on this, at least from like earlier in your life to now? Mm -hmm. Well, generally, when we speak statistically, uh, Rusin from Serbia are they are they are immigrating like really, and the amount of people, for example, in my village is pretty low. You know, when I just like. I need to wake up and realize like there is no people here anymore you know like the old ones mainly the old ones and like oh okay what are we going to do about this and yes i am afraid of our nationality dying because because there are a lot of factors here uh that's something i already wrote about first the educational system is um, I don't know how much I like, repeat myself, but you know, as in Keres Turbi, our kids are studying only on Russian language. But you know, we don't have much people, and then here comes to mixed marriages between, for example, Russians and Serbian people. And you know, um, when you compare them, like, can you guess which one will like uh, change their nationality? Like, who will? Ad adapt to another person and yes of course it will be the russians which will like okay i'll take the i will change my religion i will be orthodox i will speak serbian my kids won't learn the russian okay uh, about religion i don't really care because we're still um okay we're, it's still christianity and i don't really matter but to change your like identity like i won't speak russian anymore like my kids i can imagine my kids speaking only serbian for example you know like my first thing is like they will definitely learn both languages because the kids are literally the smartest in their ages you know people when grow up they become a bit more stupid in some way and i don't see the point so why should they learn like only one language and when it comes to mixed marriages you know often they send their kids to there are a lot of examples that uh, couples are living in Kerestur and they don't want their kids to learn Russian language and they send them to our schools outside of our village you know like they won't speak Russian and I just I'm really frustrated and terrified about that uh, from other sides, we are the only village that educate only the Russian language. Um, in the other villages, there are like 
in one there's like half Serbian people, half Russian. In the third one, you know, they always choose the Serbian language as primary because you know, uh, why do we need Russian language? You know, we don't need it in the world. It's usually what people say, like we are living in Serbia, we need to speak Serbian, and mostly of them doesn't really know I even have to speak Serbian, right? But that's okay. And uh, you know, I am thinking it is our language is dying here. It, it definitely is because uh, that's a worldwide problem when people, you know, today's world has a lot of problems and has a lot of more important things for them and their identity isn't one of them. And, you know, that's just a sign of lower intelligence for me because the way we are putting into ourselves, like we care about our physical state, mental health and state, I don't know, like we are evolving and uh, our identity is part of us, you know, we should just keep it, we don't need to put it away, yeah. So I don't really see the point when where people don't want to speak Russian language anymore. And there are a lot of examples that shows that it is that way. And I mean, that is just, you know, it is so unfortunate. And I, I just, uh, I can't at the moment find a way to solve it that's not solve these issues without thinking of like radical ideas of of solutions like for example you know for the longest time i always thought that if we just got more schools or we just did these more things like this i i, I mean i think in honestly it's almost a problem of lack of ideology in some sense of that like it, it's a lack of national character i mean it truly is i mainly think of the carpet russians because that's primarily who i care about but pannonian russians obviously uh can be included in that to to some degree i'm all out of ideas except for radical ones i want to hear what ideas you have if, if you have any in terms of solving this issue and i don't just mean staving off assimilation i mean actually like prospering to some extent or, or at least our nationality prospering um you know especially for the pannonians i just don't know the situation enough to come up with any good ones but as someone who's lived there all all your life i kind of want to hear what you think the solutions would would be <laughs> yes well um you know, when I started writing for uh, RLS, I was writing like, um, you know, my personal feelings that I love being a Russian. It is nice. We should not forget it. But, you know, like uh, when time passed on, I was thinking like, um, wow, that was a really bad article, you know, like it's not bad. As article, but it's bad because it doesn't have, it doesn't follow as, as you would say, your mission, you know. Like, I like articles where you got a point, where you can ask questions or give answers. And questions is okay, you know. So, you know, you know we can do, we can make schools, we can like um, work up with our educational system, we can do all of these things. But, you know, the most important thing is uh, the people. People are, people are most important like if they don't want you can you can make them up you can create the perfect world if they're not satisfied they won't they won't live in it you know and um, generally i think the problem is with the people and you know we need to separate problems which are like only in the russian community and problems which are like based in the whole world it is the whole it is the like the worldwide problem i would call it worldwide depression in people's minds like uh, the people in general do doesn't really uh, think the proper way anymore they don't really focus on themselves you know and that's the one um one of the things is our national identity so you know 
um, the thing with the Pannonians is it's not so bad. It's just I feel there are a lot of divisions, you know. They are the ultimately Russian people, like we are Russians, we are on top, we're okay. You have like the middle middle grade ones and the one who doesn't really care, you know. We need, uh, I don't like divisions, you know. Um, there are a lot of bad things, corruption, nepotism. It is it is here with like um, in a huge percent, and I really don't like it. So I did left Kerestor too because I didn't like it anymore. But um, you know the problem is with the people. There are people who can make things better. You know we're here. We're already doing that. But you know. Um, same for uh, RLS. I was inviting people to like the page. I was telling people to read the articles, but, but they're like, they're not interested in it, you know? And you're like trying to get to them and like, you know, it will be better, it will be greater. I mean, I was uh, talking with one of my best friends about the standardization of the language. That's, that's uh, from where my idea comes, okay? But, um, you know, people don't want to, I think they are pessimistic in general. Like they don't see, uh, yeah, one uh, pretty young person, boy, who I wanted to interview was like, I don't see the point of the war, of the talking about things. Like I don't see uh, optimistic uh, and I don't see the point of, he, he didn't saw points of anything, you know. And my solutions, well, you know, I'm the type of pe type of person who's really into philosophy and, uh, and psychology. And I do believe you really need to get into people first to see them, even to, I don't have to say it, to try to buy them with something. But, you know, we need to show them like the real, uh, the real thing and the real, uh, like, why is it important? Why is it not? The good sides of everything, the bad sides of everything. Why you should um, acknowledge that you are this or that you are not this? Why is Serbia a homeland? Why it isn't? You know, the Russians in Pannonia, uh, we, uh, I remember when we were interviewing, when I was with you, um, I told you that I saw mainly a lot of historical articles, you know, and that I'm not that kind of type. Be and I'm usually based on the future and today. And the Russians in Pannonia, I do see they are, if I can say they are traditionalists, you know, they are like really keeping up um, to stay the tradition, the history, the culture. And that is very nice. You do have a lot of nice uh, like events and everything, but that's not it. They're like keeping it for themselves, you know, and, um, until they start sharing it, they won't really evolve in that way, you know? It's like we're keeping, we're in the small circle, we're Russians from Pannonia, we're the only one, we are, they, they are in the comfort zone, you know, completely. And they don't really, I don't know, are the people afraid to make a bigger steps or they don't want to or they are lazy? I'm not really sure, but some of them are, uh, yes, I may say that some of them are quite disappointed disappointed in other people because being a Russian has uh, a lot of benefits, you know? We're always talking about uh, how how minorities, national minorities in some country, like they are discriminated or something. I don't really think that. I think that Russians are in a good position in Serbia. And we should actually use that because we are a small group, you know, and it is maybe a bit easier to work with that small groups. And Serbia is a place where we have a lot of dif different a lot of different groups, you know, besides Serbians, we do have a lot of Hungarians, Russians, Romanians, Slovaks. And so, you know, I do like that today's principal uh, in Kerestor is doing a good job because she is like, as I call my article, keeping up with the world. She is doing... Um, she is including Russian school into 
the world you know always with a lot of seminars like events in europe including other countries and i think that's a very good way but there are some still things missing uh, i think that we should just um, it's just about the talking you know like um just um yeah i blocked out a bit well i th i think that yeah i mean i think these things i mean there's so many variables you can go down that it's almost hard to keep track i mean i think kind of a few that stand out that are very similar with all communities generally speaking historically horrible leader leadership and like um handing off power i mean both these things have historically not been really our forte as a people uh and it doesn't sound like pannoni russians are that much different uh this one uh this one russian from from hungary told me a joke of that like uh for every russian organization there's like 15 vice presidents <laughs> and yes it uh, sounds pretty accurate uh you know i i've just been i mean i think i don't know how it is in in pannonia but like every organization I come across, whether it be in America, whether it be in the, in the homeland, is almost like a fossil. Like they don't know how to reach the young people that well. They're all a bunch of old boomers. I, I don't know if you guys call that generation boomers in, in Serbia, but you maybe maybe you don't have generation names. But um, and it's kind of a thing of like where you have all these old people. And yet no one's training a younger generation to kind of take over for them. Like, I don't know what it's like there, but in America, you have this kind of very um, interested boomer class of Rusins. And yet they do jack all for uh, reaching the young people. None of their kids are into it. You know, they routinely just let every opportunity like slip through their hands. And so, I, I, I mean, I think that's one variable. We can kind of put that aside. I mean, I think that's one variable. I, I, I mean, I think another is that you kind of touched on it, is that this kind of lack of overarching ideology that doesn't allow people to take the next step uh, in terms of, like, cultural development, political development, um, ethnic development. A stateless people is the result of two things. Um, either they didn't have enough population to have created their own state at some point or they were too incompetent versus all the other people around them um and that's why they're stateless people and i think that i mean i think on both accounts that that describes us pretty well frankly and so i have thoughts of what that kind of ideological bend would be but it's kind of like trying to get a whole bunch of people who don't even know what thinking and kind of roots in, in ethnic consciousness or nationalist consciousness is even you know it's not i don't even think it's a case for most russians that it's a sense of that uh they know what to do to move forward to standardize a kind of a one russian language or to kind of even just form like basic kind of like regional political parties where it makes sense they don't even know what doing the right way means well i can't uh, really talk much about it because you know i actually in person i never met any carpathian <laughs> but um only like actually, you know uh... Vladimir is a Carpathian. Oh, but okay. Like, that's one. So you, but he's, you met but one. He's a... You met one total, yes. One. <laughs> but he's <laughs> very specific. I wouldn't really... Uh, he's a specific person. He's not the average Rusin. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. No. <laughs> in, in a good way. Specific in a good way, of course. But... Um, well, we did when we had a meeting at Petrovarade in the Pannonians and like the Carpathians, or like I put them all on the Carpathian side. I did so like a bit of confidence there, you know. I, I could say the Carpathians have more confidence in themselves as Russians, definitely. 
and I think they are a bit more open-minded. <laughs> yeah, okay, I need to say something positive about uh, Pannonians. It will be bad if I don't. <laughs> but um, uh, I mean, they are in their homeland. I mean, I believe it's a bit different. You know, they feel the ground they are on. It's theirs. So I guess that makes a difference. But maybe maybe Carpathians should help us a bit, you know, to push push us a bit forward <laughs> to keep going. I don't know. I think we should make um, more interactions between ourselves, you know, like meeting up in personal. That will be definitely interesting. But yeah, mostly in self-confidence, I see the differences. Um, I think they're more positive. They have more positive attitude, attitudes. And I think they're more actually thinking about this kind of things. You know, they're more dedicated to their identity. I will say that. Pannonian Rusins should get vouchers to live in Transcarpathia so that they can teach Transcarpathians how to uh, do anything in terms of like actually saying like what setting up a school means, how to set up a newspaper. Like, actually, like, you know, because the Pannonians are really good at that, actually, compared to Transcarpathians. And maybe you guys will teach them what Rusin actually means, right? Uh, that, that that might be a good start. But, yeah, I, it's interesting you say confidence. I, I, I mean, I've not exactly heard that, uh, heard the opposite about Pannonians, but they just seem a little more neurotic uh, in general. <laughs> I think I mean, I'm, just, I'm just sorry for no names. I'm just being honest, but you, mm. you guys do seem a little more neurotic down there. I have one kind of other separate question is that I don't know how political you're willing to go. Um, but I heard there was some controversy about uh, some certain person meeting with the Ukrainian uh, ambassador or something like that as like a Ukrainian diaspora. Now, tell me what the fuck is going on with that. Or tell me, is this a common, <laughs> I mean, is this a common thought process for people there? Or is this like a thing where it's very much dividing the community? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't go much deep into that because I don't even know what happened there. But, you know, the problem, one of the problems more is that Russians in Pannonia sometimes act as they are Ukrainians. You know, some of them really wants to be like Ukrainians. Someone, some of them says they are Ukrainians, you know. And uh, there was something like going on uh, some events and, you know, um, uh, some amount of people were invited, yes, as Ukrainians into like embassy or something, you know. And these people are the people who are extremely Ukrainophiles. They're like Ukraine. It's like they want to be like Ukraine people, you know. And uh, there are Russians who are like not into that. I am part of that, definitely. That we're definitely separated nations, you know. Russians, Ukrainians, Russians, and that's all. There are spaces between all of these words. What and percentages nations. would you say it is versus like, like Ukrainophile versus Russophile? What percentage would you give give it as uh, a, as as a community down there? Okay, um, I would say we're, we are lucky that the, the percentage of Ukrainophiles is a lover. It is a lover, but they are the strong ones, you know, <laughs> in some way. Uh, I don't know, maybe 30%, 20 There are not many of them, but they are very influential people, you know. So but, that means we need to remove them from office is what is what you're telling me. Is this what is this what you're I I I have a feeling this is this is, we might need to take these actions. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to get you in trouble. But uh uh yeah, uh, that's that's surprisingly again American Russians are totally wrong. They told me it was something like 60-40 Ukrainophiles were were more numerous. So um just proves never listened to a boomer about anything ever. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, 
why? Why why are these Ukrainophiles around? I mean, let's be honest here. Pannonian Rusin is closer to Slovak in many ways than, than it is to Carpathian Rusin. They're so far away. I mean, is it because of like the whole like university scholarships to Kiev back in the day? Or like or like what exactly has been the reason for this? Oh, oh easy question, hard to answer. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I guess every one of them has their own personal motto, uh, like motives, but I I'm not sure. Maybe it's easier for them to be Ukrainians, you know. I well guess well guess what? At least Ukrainians are competent enough to like know they're Ukrainians, be proud of their Ukrainians, you know, go for Ukrainian interests. But well, we're just incompetent so I, I i don't blame them in that respect so <laughs> I, I, i'm yeah, serious but... it just seems like they have their act together honestly that will be it fair enough oh, all right well do you have anything else to tell me to scold me about uh something i did not ask you do you have something you want to tell the audience this is kind of your open floor well um what can i tell i can tell people they should definitely continue reading the articles and i think they should send their own too you know the more we have it is the better and uh i don't know we should we should do the the, the uh, pannonian and carpathian russian exchange people you know we'll send some pannonians to carpathia and some carpathians here so we can clear things off you know to Perfect. see the lifestyles we have yeah Perfect. okay i'm volunteering i want to go to <laughs> carpathia <laughs> it's, so... a, it's a great time it's a beautiful place <laughs> No one will say yeah. that they're Rusin, but it is a beautiful place. So I can that. even find myself as a queen. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Fair enough. Uh that will be it, I guess. You know, thank you for calling me. I I think I think it will be a You muted yourself, I believe. Oh, accidentally. Um <laughs> okay. what a blooper said, for the first for episode. Oh dear. No, I'm kidding. Go on, go on. You got more job to cut to, to cut parts. And then, oh no, I'm gonna leave it all in everything. Oh, yeah. oh, great. <laughs> okay, so thanks you. Uh, thanks for inviting me. You know, I really hope we'll do it again. And I guess that's it for the first time. It's perfect. Right, no problem. Thank you for coming on, and uh, to those that are listening. I'll probably have a schedule of one podcast episode every week. So stay tuned for that. And until next time.